Hello and welcome back to this lecture series and lecture number seven in this uh, in this series on Windows Server 2016 with me, Joachim Shevrestad from the University of Skövde. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to have a very quick look on the Windows Server Backup tool uh, that we can use, of course, to take backups of our server, which is something that you should do with regular intervals, of course. And uh, so to go ahead and play with the tool, what we need to do is install it. So as we're used to by now, what we will do is that we will go to manage in the upper right, right corner of the server manager and we'll hit the add rules and features. And uh, we'll click next, next, next until we get to the rules selection. And this time we'll actually realize that we're not going to install the role because it's not here. Instead, we will install a feature that is called Windows Server Backup. So the reason why it's a feature is because it is not a server that you uh, provide to the network. Rather, it's a feature that is to be used on a local machine. So we'll select Windows Server Backup, and then as we're used to by now, we'll go Next, and we'll go Install, and we'll have a very brief wait before we get a full low progress bar, and everything is done. Uh, so uh, backupping is of course perhaps the most important uh, the most important way that you can defend yourself against most uh, security threats. So whether your server breaks down, whether it's encrypted by some ransomware or so on and so forth, you will be able to restore what you have if you have a proper backup system in place. Uh, so we're going to sh look at two different ways of uh, of creating backups. I mean, not I don't have space in my environment here to fully do them, but I just want to show you the Windows Server Backup tool. So what we do is that we go into Tools and we select Windows Server Backup, and then we get to the backup interface. We can hit Local Backup here, and basically either take backups that are one-time backup, or we can uh, or we can create schedules to create backups with regular intervals. So what we want to do here is show you how we can do these different types of backups. So if we go to have a look at the right pane here, uh, you see that we have the backup schedule icon. So what we're going to do is just select uh, backup schedule and see what's there. So in this wizard, we can create backup schedules for different types of backups. So I'm going to show you the first type of backup first. So when we look at the types of backup that we can do in Windows Server Backup, there are basically two. Either we can do the full server backup or we can make the custom. Uh, in the full server backup, we back up everything. And with the custom backup, we choose what files and volumes we want to back up. Uh, and there are essentially two types of backup that I want you to be aware about. So there is first the full server backup or what you sometimes refer to as the bare metal, uh, bare metal recovery backup. So what this does it, is that it collects everything that is needed for a complete bare metal recovery. So what a bare metal recovery means is basically that you should be able to take a fully new server with nothing installed on it and then restore uh, rest restore your server as it was when you took the backup to that. Uh, and that is something that is quite common, I would guess, for, for instance, your user server or servers that has um, that has a lot of system critical data that has to be updated, uh, that has to be able to be restored real quick. And the other type of backup is custom backups or just backupping in files and folders. And you would select that whenever you are backup, backing up something that where you don't need to be able to restore the entire operating system or stuff like that, where, or, but when you're only interested in the files. And the idea here is, of course, that uh, doing the full server backup will, with the bare metal recovery option will take more, more place. But on the other hand, you will get ba you will get virtually everything. Whereas while you do the custom backup, you'll only get what you choose. And of course, if you have a file server and back it up only using the files, uh, then you uh, then to restore the files you would have to install Windows or Windows Server to that machine and then uh, place the files there again. You can in some way compare that to file copy. And um, so to do a full server backup, we just hit next and follow the dialog. So first we can select how often we want to do it. So we have two options here: either we can do it once a day, or we can do it more than once a day. And we can select a time. It's of course good to understand that sending backups over the internet or the backup process itself is quite resource intense. So it's a good idea to do it while, when the office is closed. And we'll just stick with the default so I can show you the destination type. So here you can back up to a hard drive, to a volume, or to a shared network folder. So if we back up to a hard drive that is dedicated for backups, this is going to be a local hard drive that we use for this purpose only. 
Uh, this is the way that is recommended by Windows, but what you should know here is that, for inst instance, is that if a flooding happens or if someone physically comes and steals your computer, there is a good chance that they will steal the backup as well. Uh, perhaps one good schedule or one good way to solve this would be to take backups uh, during the night and then come morning, uh, the backup admin would go place the uh, hard drive containing the backups in a safe somewhere for safekeeping. Um, next option is backup to a volume and in this case you just back up to an, another partition on the same volume or uh, on the same hard drive or perhaps on another hard drive. Uh, well, there, why would you want to do this? Well, in some cases you want to cre create a history so you have different versions of files and your data didn't this, uh, for easy access, then this can be a good way to go but I would say that it's the least secure option. Uh, the last option that you can, could use is backup to a shared network folder. And this is what you wanna do when you have a backup server somewhere and you want to send your backups there. So I'll go, we'll go with backup to a shared network folder and what you get to then is just a place where you can, uh, where you can input the location. So I'm just gonna have to take something that exists so I will take backslash backslash sewer backslash uh, all. Uh, of course, this is not going to work, but um, because, well, I'm backing up this machine to itself, so I'll run out of space. Um, but this would typically be a backup server somewhere. Uh, for access control, you can choose to uh, <coughs> make the backup accessible to everybody who has access to the specified remote shared folder. So make sure that you have proper permissions on your shared folders. It should, of course, only be accessible by admins and uh, authorized personnel. Uh, remember that all the data that is on this server will, of course, be in the backup. So you don't want to uh, go out and make it publicly available to everyone. So if I hit next, I will get to provide the password and username that's to be used for the backup. So I'll go with administrator. And that was something wrong with that. Okay, uh, whatever. So this is all that I'm gonna do because I'm not gonna do the actual backup. So I'll hit cancel there. And for the final touch of the backup part, I just wanna show you uh, how you can backup specific files and folder. So I'll start the wizard again and click through the getting started dialog. And instead of full server, I will select custom here in this first dialog. So what I'll have to select now is that I will be faced with just a white box of, uh, of where I can input the stuff that I want to back up. So let's say this is a file server. The only thing that I'm really interested in is what's going to be stored in that shared folder that we created earlier. So what I would do then is that I just hit this select or add item button and then I browse my way to what I want and then I just go ahead and mark it. So in this way, I'm not backing up the entire server. I'm just getting the, the shared fi files and folders, which is what I'm interested in. So then I can do next, again I can select a type, I can select the destination type, uh, and so on and so forth. So that is how the Windows Server Backup tool works. Uh, then to restore from a backup, we can do that in two different ways as well. Either we can have recover here, and that is basically to recover files or folders, but if we want to do this bare metal recovery, what we would have to do is start up an entirely fresh machine, boot it from a DVD or, uh, or a network boot holding the installation files, the ISO, with the Windows Server installations, and then we can go with repair this computer and follow that dialog. And what we need to have ready then is the a user account that has access to the backup and we uh, and yeah that's what we need to have really so there's one thing that you should really know and that is something that you should do when when it comes to recovery is that you should create thorough and easy to follow recovery guides because you will be recovering data during times of stress i mean if your user server goes down you'll have the entire company coming at you the company will be losing money by the hour and you or maybe someone else that is more junior than you will have to do a restoration process so you should make sure that you have a really good recovery guide for those different types of recoveries that you may want to do which is of course file restoration and bare metal recovery and my personal opinion is that there should always be a bare metal recovery guide that is basically a step-by-step -step, uh, guide that has images in it that has uh, everything that you need to know easily accessible so even anyone's grandmother can follow it 
Uh, while we're on the topic of backup, I really want to tell you that there are nice ways to, to utilize virtualization for backup. So instead of using Windows Server Backup, you may have all your machines in a virtual environment with, I don't know, Hyper-V or VMware or KVM or whatever. And then there is usually two different ways that you can uh, utilize those virtualization platforms for backup. So the first one is export. And you can say that export uh, in most cases is similar to this bare metal recovery in that you would export the entire machine. And then of course, if it breaks down and you need to import it again, well then you just import it and you're good to go. Uh, the other one is snapshots. So I'm using snapshots all the time when I use uh, when I'm working with virtuals uh, in virtual environments. Because what a snapshot is does is it, that it takes a snapshot of the current state of a machine. So uh, the current settings, the current programs, the current files, everything that is current. And then if something goes wrong, then you can revert that snapshot uh, that machine to a earlier state. And that is very good for troubleshooting. It's extremely powerful when you need to install new stuff. So, for instance, some best practices and the topic of backup would be to, before you uh, install Windows Update or install some program that you're not fully sure of, then maybe you should do a snapshot so that you can just easily return to a known good state if that, has to, if, if, if that is needed. Uh, so, that's it for lesson number seven. Now, uh, for the last two lessons, we'll go through remote apps, so you, uh, how you can use Windows Server uh, 2016 to create a web portal for uh, different applications like Microsoft Office, uh, calculators, so on and so forth. And in the last lecture, I'll show you how you can use Windows deployment services to automatically deploy uh, Windows 10 clients over the network. Uh, so for the next lesson, I'm actually going to sheet a little bit and use a previously recorded lesson, but I hope you can do with that. So thank you and goodbye.